Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a beautiful day today and for the opportunity to uh, vote, which is a blessing that comes from you. We pray that uh, you would be with this council meeting. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to uh, rearrange the uh, agenda just a little bit tonight. And uh, we have a uh, special, uh, actually two special things going on tonight. One is going to be recognizing our dispatcher. I have a proclamation here that the uh, chief wrote up, and uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll read it. And it does have a lot of the whereases, so uh, bear with <coughs> uh, National Public Safety Telecommunications Week is April 10th through the 16th, 2022. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas, when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas, the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accurate of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Kennett Emergency Communications Center. And whereas, public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact <coughs> our citizens have with emergency services. And whereas public safety telecommunication, telecommunicators are the single vital link for our police officers, our firefighters, by monitoring their activity by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety communicators of the Kennett 911 communications have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during their performance of their job in the past year. Therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Kennett declares the week of April 10th through the 16th, 2022 to be National <coughs> Safety Communicators Week in Kennett in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city's citizens safe. Signed, this fifth day of April 2022 by your mayor. I'd like to thank all of our community, our uh, telecommunicators, our dispatchers, all for the job that you guys do. Uh, because without you, our police, our fire, and all that, you're our first line. Yeah. Yeah. Responsibility that relies on uh, comes on all these people here in front of you. Anytime you see a fire truck, police car, ambulance, whatever's going, these are the individuals that get that started and they take the calls. I can't tell you how much I appreciate their work and their dedication to our city uh, for both police officers, firemen, and our medical personnel. Their job is very important to us. So, tonight I'm going to ask you guys to all raise your right hand. Okay. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully perform the duties of telecommunicator. And I will act at all times with respect. And I will act at all times with respect. For the law and the good of the community. For the law and the good of the community. And I will uphold the rules. In the regulation of my department, and regulations of my department, and I will perform my duties, and I will perform my duties to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. I think also Rachel, she's our communication supervisors. Uh, she has 
service pins for a number of years. Uh, my right right here is William Jones. How long have you been here, William? Uh, five years, going on six. Five years. <coughs> Courtney Peff? Five years. Five years. Rachel, how long have you been Almost seven. Seven. And Mary Beth is our part time. Mary Beth Thompson, a couple years with us now, part time. Uh, Evan Bishop? Two years, going on three. Kelsey Mays? Two years. And then Chad Allen? Since November this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for everything that you do for our city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. As Mayor said, my name is Johnny Dalton, and John Chittister and I are partners in the law firm of Dalton, Maurer, and Chittister here in Kent. Most of you remember our late partner, Mike Maurer, who served as Kent's city judge for several years. We're here tonight to address a question that you, as the mayor and the members of the city council, here all the time. <clears throat> when are we going to get a new industry in Kennet? You've probably heard that question more times than you can count. When are we going to get a new industry in Kennet? Well, I'm proud to be able to tell you that the answer to that question is tonight. <clears throat> past several months, Johnson and I have had the pleasure of working with our clients, Central Illinois Manufacturing, also known as SimTech Filtration. That's SIM, C-I-M, which stands for Central Illinois Manufacturing, and Tech, T-E-K, SimTech Filtration. We're pleased to announce that yesterday, SimTech closed on the purchase of the former Parker Hennepin factory building here in Kennett and they will be setting up a manufacturing operation here with work starting immediately. Now, as with almost every type of economic development, this announcement is the result of a lot of hard work by the state of Missouri, by Dunklin County, by the Kennett Chamber of Commerce, and by the city of Kennett. We're going to pass out a press release here in just a minute that includes the details of how all that took place. Make sure you get a copy. Those of you in the gallery, make sure you get a copy too. We brought 60. That ought to be enough. But if it's not, we'll run off some more. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I'd like to introduce to you some representatives of Simtech. James Ayers, if you wouldn't mind standing, please, James, is the president of Simtech. Next to him is Jeff Ayers, who is the general manager of Simtech. And then next to him is Steve Ayers, who's the secretary of the Simtech Board of Directors. Now James is going to speak next, and he's going to tell you about their company and about their plans for Kenneth. As you can tell from that list of names that I just read, this is a family company. I think you're going to like them. James, you ready? Good evening, my name is James Ayers, I'm president of Central Illinois Manufacturing Company and have been since 1995. Uh, as Johnny mentioned, uh, he's done a great job for us here in town. Uh, we've been looking for additional property for some time. 
uh, hired uh, consultants out of Chicago and been in the hunt uh, for quite some time. And we're fortunate that we were able to identify about a year ago the property here in Kennet that uh, Parker Hennepin uh, formerly owned. So besides my brother Steve, I have a brother Robert who's a doctor in uh, Monmouth, Illinois, practices medicine at uh, Galesburg, Illinois, and my sister Betty, who's from New York City, uh, who works as a school teacher now, but formerly was in the advertising business. And then we have 11 grandchildren who also have an interest in the business, and Jeff being one of the 11. So, uh, our business basically, we make gas station filters. Uh, there's only two companies in the U.S. that do that. Uh, one is our former supplier of ours, and then us. We were the first in the market. Uh, my dad founded the company 65 years ago. He was a, a mechanical engineer, worked for FS, and uh, came up with a product called the Prevent, which is a, a gas cap that prevents evaporation loss on above ground storage tanks of petroleum product and other uh, petroleum type products. And so we've been making that product for 65 years. Uh, we have several knockoffs uh, from India and uh, China, but ours is the original, and we repatented that recently uh, to uh, make it new and improved, and we still sell that product after 65 years. So in 1958, MFA Oil Company uh, here in the state of Missouri came to us and wanted us to provide diesel fuel filtration. Nobody else was doing that. And it came to us because of our agriculture background and because of our interest in fuel. We did a lot of the initial work on the standard oil vinyl filter that was in the, the hose uh, years ago, back in probably the 60s. So we started doing that, and then we moved into gas station dispensers. And so a dispenser requires an underwriter's laboratory certified product for anything that goes inside the dispenser or works on the dispenser. And so each one of our products in this market has to be individually pressure tested to make sure when it leaves our place, you know it's going to work because we've already pressure tested it before we put it in the box as it goes out the door. So I brought some catalogs uh, for you folks who are interested. We sell through distribution. And uh, that distribution we have, uh, we have about uh, I think it's like 750 different customers. Uh, we have no major uh, percentage of our business to any one company. We've very widely diversified as far as who buys our product, uh, but you've got to necessarily be in the business. We do a lot of private labeling, so we'll make a filter for somebody and put someone else's name on there, such as Parker Annabelle, uh a customer of ours, a customer of ours uh, before all of this, a customer still a customer of ours, and we buy product from them. They provide us with gaskets and seals and other things. So um, it's a small, uh, the number of players in the filtration business, small number uh, in reality to the number of filters that are out there in the marketplace. The, in the filter business, if you're Donaldson or if you're Wix, you make only 50% of the filters you make because you're buying them from somebody else who set up to make a certain filter, and that's our business is in that same niche in the sense that we make filters, but we make smaller runs. We don't make a day's worth of the same filter. We'll make 40 or 50 different changes as we go through production on a daily basis. So we have 900 different products and uh, for our customers, and again, 40% of our business is private label, which is putting somebody else's name on it. So we're looking forward. Uh, we've looked, uh, we've been a lot of places looking for locations, and this is the one that we like the best. This is the one that we're most excited about. And um, so we're very excited about being here and, and expanding our current business. We have four buildings in Bement, Illinois, which is near between Champaign and Decatur. Uh, Illinois and Central Illinois, five hours from here, and we have another building in Monticello, Illinois, but we need more space, and this will give us the space that we have. We have the business, we just need the space to make more product. So with that, I'm uh, happy to say that we're really glad. The Chamber was very helpful. Other people, Johnny and his firm, 
were very helpful and the ch Chamber of Commerce, uh, we've been well received and trust me when I say we have been many different places looking. Part of it, we were doing it ourselves and then we hired our consultants and uh, the experience that we have. We, the, the location, the geographic location along the Mississippi River uh, is the best for uh, many product producers, including us. Uh, when we looked in Florida, it was adding a million dollars of freight costs by us being in Florida instead of, say, in this general location. So location is really important with 90% of our business in, in the U.S. and all of our products made in the U.S. So um, anyway, I'm thankful for the city council support, the county, and the state of Missouri, and we look forward to uh, a long uh, relationship here in this community. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mayor, uh, Ms. Combs would like to say a couple of remarks and I'll finish up. And okay. We Thank promise you. we won't take long. I'm Melissa Pounds from Kennett Chamber. Uh, Kennett Chamber of Commerce had the pleasure of meeting with the Ayers family last summer. In conversation, I just felt a mutual warmth with them and in learning about their company, I felt that their company culture would fit in with the Kennett community very well. Over the past several months, the Chamber Office has been a confidential communication hub for this project, working with county and state partners to execute an incentive package that would be beneficial for all involved partners. I'd like to thank a few people who were helpful over the past few months. Um, I would like to thank Jim Grieving, who initially invited me to meet with this group with him last summer. Also, a big thanks is owed to Bob Young, who has immaculately cared for that property since the previous tenants left, and he's been an asset since it's been vacant. Anytime we needed to show it to someone, he was readily available and knows every nook and cranny, and I was so thankful for his help. Also, a big thanks needs to be given to Duncan County Commission and the Missouri Department of Economic Development for being so accommodating and helping with incentives for the project. I look forward to working with the Semtec family and witnessing them turn out quality products from the Kennett facility. Kennett Chamber hopes that we can help Semtec <coughs> prosper and continue to attract more businesses like this to our community. Thank you all. Thank you. Before I wrap this up, where did my press releases get to? <laughs> Nothing as a lawyer if you don't have a big stack of paper, will you? <laughs> Trina Bell? Yes, sir. I have to look right at the camera when I look at you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But I think it would be great if the front page of Thursday's Delta Dunklin Democrat read, New Factory Coming to Kennedy in headlines about this big. <laughs> to the mayor and city council, I'm not trying to tell you what to do either, but you heard James Ayers say the first thing that put Kennett on their radar was the availability of a building. I'd like you to keep that in mind when you discuss your future plans and your future budgets. To the citizens of Kennett, if you like how this feels tonight, and you'd like to help bring the next factory to town, join the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber did a ton of work to help make tonight possible. And with your help and your membership dues, they can do so again. I'll close by saying, if you woke up this morning worrying about the future of Kennett and the future of Dunklin County, I'd like to think that tonight's announcement gives you some hope. If you woke up this morning worrying about getting a job or worrying about getting a better job, I'd like to think that tonight's announcement gives you an opportunity. And to everyone from Semtec, from the people of the state of Missouri, and from Dunklin County, and from the city of Kennett, thank you for giving us a chance. We look forward to a long and successful relationship. Let's all give James 
Jeff, and Steve a warm welcome and a big round of applause. Six calls uh, were medical and rescue in uh, nature. And with that being said, uh, the, the top responding medical type of calls that we respond to is chest pains and breathing troubles. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to inform you that uh, starting next week, we begin some in house training on a new cardiac monitor uh, that we received through a, a grant through the state of Missouri. And we're very excited with that uh, because of its Bluetooth capability and telecommunications capability that uh, it will assist the citizens in Kenneth that if in the event that they're having a true heart attack, that the information can be passed along a lot quicker and saving a lot more lives and we can pass that along to the, to the hospital. So I'm very thrilled to, to note that. Some other good news that we received uh, this past week, uh, we did receive a $50,000 grant from USDA. 
and that grant is going towards uh, emergency uh, equipment. The fire committee, we met last week, and there has been some discussions, and again, there will continue to be some discussions about what, uh, what best uh, uh, items would suit that money as far as helping the city out. So, great, we were thrilled to hear about that. Um, other things kind of going on, two weeks ago we had a, a, our first meeting with Zoller Construction in regards to the Fire Station 2 project. Uh, went very well. Uh, expect some groundbreaking to be taking place uh, the first part of August. So some discussion took place as far as when we need to have things demolished and so forth. And we kind of going along the schedule that by the first of July we need to have everything kind of vacated at that time. Which brings up a discussion point, uh, may not get solved tonight, but uh, I know for many years it's kind of been a headache for, for a lot of us and uh, fire and the city. What do we do with that house trailer? Well, now's the time, folks. We're finally going to be able to do something about that. So um, I did not really expect much discussion to take place tonight, but uh, between now and the next council meeting, uh, well, I'm sure we'll have another fire committee meeting, but we need to have some really good discussion about what we want to do with it, whether it's sell or move it to another location, preferably somewhere outside the city limits of Kent. Uh, the outdoor warning siren that was currently at uh, Fire Station 2, uh, the, uh, Kenneth, the uh, Duncan County Fair Board, uh, they met last night and they've agreed that we can move that uh, outdoor warning siren over to their property, the property that they own uh, around the b &H, the old b &H building. <coughs> and we're, we're thrilled that they, they're allowing us that opportunity to move it there. Uh, so that's going to be taking place here probably within a couple of weeks. Uh, with other things going on, another thing we need to kind of have a serious discussion about is codes. And I know for some of you, you're rolling, either rolling your eyes or a big, <sighs> well trust me, it's something we need to have a discussion about, folks. Uh, our current codes are at 2012, 2012, that is 10 years, 10 years. Codes are updated every three years. And with our last ISO, uh, when it came out, one thing with fire prevention and the fire side of things is we need to have a fire code within a five year time span. And that slightly hurts. Again, it's not a big, big hurt, but again, it's something that we need to discuss. With the city going the way we are going currently, uh, doing good things and so forth, having good up to date codes is very important. It does address such things as uh, things we're going to see in our area, tiny homes, uh, the use of connex boxes as far as construction and residential use, it's in there. Uh, some other things that it's going to amount to is it talks about uh, with the, uh, the updated of the uh, property maintenance is how to handle vacant buildings, which has been a big concern for a lot of you all, as well as the food trucks. Food trucks are becoming more prevalent in communities, and again, uh, the codes will address those issues, which will help us out. So, again, that is something that you need to have discussions with the, uh, with the folks of your wards, and uh, we need to have a little bit more in-depth discussions about that as far as the steps to go. Cost on the new sets uh, is going to run about uh, thirteen, okay, one thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars. We normally keep a set at the Code Enforcement Office, but we also keep a set at the Duncan County Library. And that's so that citizens, uh, if they have some concerns or want to know how to build something properly, they can go to their Duncan County Library and, and find that information. So is there an online option that we can have? I'm sorry. Do we have is there an online option that we can add to that? There is an online option with that as well. as PDF download. And that is part of the cost. It's part of the cost? It is part of the cost. So, um, so I'll, I will leave it leave it there with that. Um, you know, only other thing I do have to talk about: uh, there will be a floodplain review for Duncan <coughs> County. Uh, recently, the SEMA, the State Emergency Management, as well as the FEMA, Federal Emergency Management, um, they're updating their floodplain maps. And that will affect some citizens of Kennett. But again, this is not a city of Kennett issue, nor a Duncan County. This is a FEMA. This is a federal, federal update. 
So there will be a review going on uh, Thursday, April 21st, beginning at 9 a.m. at the Malden Community Center. <coughs> so I would urge uh, the council members, if you can, to attend that, as well as we will, as far as code for county officials, in finding out uh, how it may affect us here in our city. So I would request uh, that we uh, do have a closed closed meeting to discuss a hiring situation. So, anything further for me? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, human resources. I've got a, we had a meeting and I've got a few things for open discussion and a few things for <coughs> closed as well. Um, we have a uh, we have made the suggestion from the Human Resources Department that uh, we get both, uh, it's on the schedule for tonight, that we get both uh, air flight and both, both uh, helicopter uh, memberships for full-time employees. Uh, right now we have it for full-time and part-time employees, but the committee suggested that we make it a full-time employee only. Um, the Juneteenth holiday uh, right now, the city has 13 holidays uh, available, and we are suggesting that instead of taking that off, that you can use a personal day or your birthday for that holiday uh, due to the cost that it will make this day, cost the city. Um, we also would like to see a committee put together with some of the issues for uh, the uh, increase in rates uh, for the uh, uh, insurance <clears throat> and uh, we also would like to consider the idea of a grant writer with a limited uh, amount of uh, a limited payment so we can look into some of the grants that we feel like we've been missing out on and we'd like to uh, try to keep from uh, having some of the problems that we've had with uh, the groups that are doing it for us right now and uh, and maybe keep that from getting messed up. Uh, the rest of it we can discuss and then it'll be about employees. Okay. All right. You may. <clears throat> um, first, I want to um, say that Mr. Leon Foley, which worked for the city for numerous years, passed away on March 26th, uh, 26th, and he had worked a lot of years, and he's one that originally I worked with. So I want to send our condolences to his family. Um, then Santa Thornersville High School Student Government, as well as their sponsor, Sarah Bibbs and Taryn Gillette, donated a load of cat food, dog food, and other supplies to the Kennedy Department, which makes me kind of proud that they do have their own pound that they're kind of supporting ours, so um, that makes me kind of proud of that. And we also had um, picked up two dogs. Luckily, we recognized right off they had parvo, so they went straight to Dr. Mobley. We didn't save one, we did save the other. That we're kind of on low and take for taking in puppies right now, just to make sure we kind of can get them checked out before we take them in because that can literally wipe out everything that's not been vaccinated, which we vaccinate on site, but it's usually don't go into effect until they've had three rounds. So that's three months, they're not usually with us, three months. So we wanna encourage the public to get your dogs vaccinated because parvo right now is real bad and distemper. So that being said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <Excuse> <coughs> Mayor, Council, I've uh, got just a few things for tonight. Um, we're going to have a community event on May the 7th out at Indian Park. Uh, coffee with cops, dance with dispatcher, time for the community to come out and kind of meet some of our police officers, have a time with our dispatcher too. Um, be out at Indian Park from 8 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock that morning. <coughs> on hand that day, we're going to have uh, Corporal Mays and Rocky there to do a demonstration for the public, for everybody to see. We're very proud of the work these two have been doing. 
Also, uh, for our DARE program, Anthony Weaver will be there for a presentation. And also our dispatcher will be there for information on what they do and what goes on in the communications department. Again, that'll be on May the 7th. Um, what time is that? From 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can go to our 911 dispatch uh, Facebook page to get more information about that. If you have any questions, you can also call <coughs> Ralph Bowles, our uh, communications supervisor. She's kind of coordinating all that for us. Um, also, to raise money for our shop of the cop, that's going to be covered around pretty soon before we know what we've already started doing some fundraisers. One thing we're doing right now is, is uh, kind of an Easter egg hunt type thing. On April the 16th, uh, there were, for people that want to sign up and have Easter egg kid in their yard and stuff, you can call or go on the web page, our Facebook page, and for $20 a yard, they're going to put out several Easter eggs that night. So it's starting, that'll be the night before Easter. They'll start that on April 16th. Again, a lot more information on our Facebook page. Contact Rachel or Courtney if you want to get involved in that. Our sponsor yard with heavy Easter put in. Also, on April 29th, our officer will be uh, participating in the Youth Alcohol Enforcement Campaign, the statewide alcohol enforcement campaign throughout the state of Missouri. This will go on from April 29th to May 8th, so for two weekends, we'll have extra officers out. This will be funded for a MODA uh, program that uh, Major Stewart gets the grant for every year. And last, but certainly not least, uh, our officers have been going through some training out at the firing range. A couple weeks ago, we had a little training session out there. This week, the officers will be going out there for their annual uh, firearm qualifications on the 6th and the 8th. Other than that, that's all I have for now. Let's see if I can be close. Thank you. Ms. Campbell, we do need to have a committee meeting. We want to try to do that Monday morning. $423,653, and I'd like to make that in the form of a motion to reset that. Second. second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you have a second bid on that concrete? Yes, we did. What was the price it, difference? It was, uh, let's see, a difference of yeah, $230,000. $653,000. Okay. It was pretty obvious what we needed to do. Okay. Then we're, thank you. And uh, we would like to, like I said, we're going to rebid that. The only bid we have right now on the asphalt is $330,399.44. So we're going to see what we can come up with on that. Um, I think anything else we can talk about later on? What else do you want? <coughs> Mayor, council members, uh, we don't have very much here. One of the things is to roll offs out of the compost. We're going to be working on trying to lower the price of that a little bit starting the first of next week on a couple of them. I think some of the trailers and the larger trucks and stuff. Uh, that, that's it. We'll have a price list. We'll get it to the paper and it will be posted out there uh, first of next week after we get a chance to make a sign. The idea. The idea you want to give us an update on the multi conversation you had? I will check into that and see what I can find out. They, when I talked to them about digging the ditch, they said they put the put their name on the list for the uh, tobacco, and it would be a month or two. And I talked about them filling in some of the uh, spots, turning <coughs> in and out of driveways mm -hmm. and streets too. They're they're bad. And they said they try to get working on that in next two or three weeks. Okay. I will. Uh, Call them again, stay on that, and see if we can get something going on. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. The reason um, we decided to lower the price 
on the go <coughs> off and such is an attempt by Mr. Hunter. Uh, would like to get that done to maybe encourage people to bring their trash and such out there rather than find the side of the road, something like that. So we're hoping that it'll pick up the uh, cleanliness of the city. Do we turn for the size or weight or what? We pay so much per dumpster and then full weight when they pick it up. How do you charge the customer? Or the he, we've got a <laughs> list out there. It's like ten dollars for a, a one bulk item, and then uh, let's see, I've got here twenty dollars for uh, or ten dollars for a one bulk item. A pickup load is twenty dollars. One ton single axle without sideboards is thirty five. A uh, 16 foot trailer with two foot sides is $50. Six, uh, trailer over 16 foot was 100, we're gonna knock it down to 50. Uh, single axle bob truck, 10 foot was 100, we're gonna knock it down to 50. And a double axle bob truck, 12 foot, we're gonna knock it down to 75. And that see if there's an idea of it. Right now we're, we're pretty close on what we're taking in and going out. It's it's they're real close, so okay. we're going to try this and see if uh, how it works out, and hopefully it'll. Well, I don't think we get a whole lot of double axle bob trucks out there. Mm -hmm. Most of them are 16, 18 foot trailers, mm -hmm. so hopefully it'll to work out all right. Can we make sure that property maintenance has a new price list so he can insert can. that into notices so people know mm -hmm. they have a way to get rid of that stuff? Yeah, yeah, we can get y'all because. Experience in the past, yeah. people say, "Well, I'm not we get some get up here to City Hall too." Uh, another mm -hmm. one other thing I didn't have on here was uh, we were asked about stop signs at the last meeting. I did check, and all of the places that y'all asked about stop signs, there is no ordinance to have a stop sign there or a yield sign. So, if y'all want them there, it'll be up to the council to. Uh, we didn't get to do that tonight at the street committee meeting because we had this other stuff with the contractors, but. We're gonna to have to have another one pretty soon and we'll discuss that and bring that back to the council as to whether or not y'all wanna put signs up or not. The MUTCD says that stop signs are not for traffic control, they're for traffic flow and they're not to be used for speed control. So that's something that uh, we'll discuss at the meeting and, and talk about possibilities of maybe yield signs instead of stop signs in some of these places. That's all we've got. <laughs> Storm uh, Good news, we had a group come in that's uh, looking at uh, uh, lining our, uh, some of our uh, systems that need to be lined. And uh, we had a, they run the camera through them and they feel like they can get it taken care of. We don't have a bid on it yet, but they're gonna line it from uh, St. Francis to Vandeventer Street. And this should continue to help our uh, stormwater issues and uh, <clears throat> any issues that we had possibly in the future. So uh, we'll be coming back to the council with a price on that. That's it. Uh -huh. um, industrial uh, senior citizens. Okay, we had a <coughs> meeting last night at the uh, Oaks Nutrition Center on Harrison. Uh, all committee members were in attendance. We discussed uh, <coughs> this is the first month of the new of the last quarter, and so some time ago we agreed to go ahead and allocate uh, at the beginning of the quarter and what they have left and what they uh, asked for and was approved is the amount of thirty-two thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, the committee recommends that we uh, go ahead and uh, pay them the $32,250 for operational expense. They are encountering, as every business is, higher prices on both food, utilities, and fuel. Uh, it's, I, I don't have exact figures, but I know just in the city, some of the, the amount of food and well-being checks that they make to senior citizens is, it's just, I mean, it's a great program to have out there. So, uh, make that a form of motion that we go ahead and pay the, the 32,500 the remaining of the 125 that? Yes. 
Yeah. That's the what. I'll make a motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, one couple other things. We were looking at their <coughs> their current 2010 Ford Transit van had about 92,000 miles of, r of rough road outside and inside the city bowl. And uh, we looked at state big contractors. This is one of the things they had in their budget last year, but um, with some other costs going on. We looked at state bid, there's currently no vehicles available and they're not even going to order any until November. So Gary, who French member, he checked with Baird, Ford Dodge, they're not able to locate one. So uh, in discussing this, we found that out today, we asked that we consider uh, looking at uh, up to $35,000 if we can locate a van to be able to replace the one that they currently use every day. Yeah, is that something that we have to authorize? Is that that's a private entity? Is that, does that fall into the... I mean, yeah, that, they're, they're, you know, unless the city wanted to buy it, the, okay. it would be on. Well, it would come out of the... Senior yeah, city. Yeah, tax. senior city. Buddy. There's currently about 335000 that is in that fund. I know that there's stipulations on how it can be spent. That's what I'm asking Gary if we can get. No, I know we're, we're just allocated another 32.5. Okay. Or, or, Does that or have to be in this budget system. year or can that something? She had it in this budget year, but with the prices going up and unavailability right now and uh, things, we looked at it. The amount of money I'd that say that's collecting. something that we probably need to look at for the next physical year. And uh, the other things we did was discuss the upcoming fiscal year and ask her to look at uh, things like parent parking lot and some of the other stuff that probably needs to be put into the upcoming budget request. Security. We'll, we'll look at yeah, that security when it's time to do the new, new budget. So I'll give this to you for the minutes. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And then, uh, you know, do you have a hospital report? Yes. Um, the uh, uh, the president and CEO of uh, Platinum Neighbors came into town and met with uh, a large majority of the uh, hospital committee <coughs> and uh, had a nice discussion with them and a very optimistic discussion with them. And I think we're on track with that. Uh, we with uh, continuing to work towards getting the hospital. Also uh, met with a company called Dirt today and had several of the members of that. And that is a backup plan for if things fall through with this hospital organization. It is a company that builds hospitals. They do not man manage or run them in any manner. But if we had to break down and uh, go with uh, a plan to provide a hospital district or something like that, and there would be a company that would be able to fulfill our needs. And so they came into town. I had explained to them that we already had this working with this current company, but we wanted to keep in touch with them. And I'm also going to discuss that option with uh, the Platinum neighbors in the future. What's uh, the San Francisco? Uh, we haven't heard anything back? No. Okay. Um, don't have anything under unfinished business. New business, uh, we need approval of the survival flight and airy back <coughs> premiums for the upcoming year as brought up in the uh, HR report to uh, both of those. The total for both of those is $9,745. <coughs> is that with full-time only? Uh, Part-time and full-time. Survival flight is forty-seven forty, and uh, airbag is five thousand and five dollars. So the total is ninety-seven forty-five. So our suggestion was to provide it for full-time members only. So that's full-time employees rather than only. So they'll offer that projection. Okay. And that was unanimous uh, with it. So that's going to be thirty-four eighty and uh, and thirty-six forty. So roughly about seven thousand. 
to say it was to several thousand dollars. Three thousand. Okay. And it seems that the uh, part-time people would predominantly be uh, workman's comp uh, if we had issues with them. So that might be a problem for us. Okay. All right. Can we get that a motion? Uh, I want to explain a little bit more. The price has gone up with one of those companies also. Was it 45 and one up to 60? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why we had to take, felt like we needed to take that action. I'll write the motion. Okay. We have a motion. Second. 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 All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 And then um, uh, we already did the approval of the concrete. Yes. Uh, yeah. But we're going to go back out on the asphalt. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, marriage report. Uh, first off, really good news with uh, Simtech. Um, 77 new jobs coming to town. Uh, there's going to be a uh, talk with them. You know, they've got their timeline, so it's going to be uh, uh, good to see the usage of the building again. Uh, and uh, great thing for Tenet to see it uh, growing and going from there. Today was election day. Hopefully you got out and went and voted. Uh, I was number 10 this morning for, uh, um, for Ward 1. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's still one of the problems that I see within Kennedy is we have a low voter turnout. Um, out of uh, the, I think one time I checked and we, had like, we did have like 6,700 registered voters in the city limits. But if you look at our usual attendance, we don't even get to 20%. 10% uh, is a normal, 15% uh, is a good percentage. Um, so <coughs> your reason to get out and vote is just that. Even though your candidate may not have anybody running against them, it's still, you know, people died to give you that ability to get out there and vote. So uh, um, it's uh, important still to go through the process and uh, show your support. Uh, that, uh, Again, you know, May 7th, hope everyone can come out for the uh, communications and for the police department. Uh, meet them. Come meet Rocky and uh, all that going on. Uh, but again, it's be nice on the compost. If the newspaper would be a good little article that lowering the cost of it may help spur a few people to take things out there. Um, or they may not know that it is the ability that um, instead of dropping the couch off at the corner or out there on the ditch bank somewhere, uh, you know, hey, it's five, ten dollars. Take it out there and uh, put it in the compost uh, um, roll off. So uh, keep things up, and so it'd be great to uh, you know, see a little bit of a story ran on that if uh, at all possible. So, uh, but with that, we have several in attendance here tonight, so we'll open up for. Uh, Oh, and good luck to all the candidates uh, that are running. Uh, haven't heard anything yet, so we'll, uh, uh, results should be coming in shortly. Uh, but uh, with that, we'll open up for uh, public comment. <coughs> Three, two, one. Okay. There's two. Anybody? Uh, approach the podium. First time here. <laughs> My name is Frances Cruz. I'm the office manager and a title agent at Duncan County Abstract. And I'm here today about the Spence Avenue parking. It's been, I've been there two and a half years. And prior to that, there's always been parking that I've seen from the employees to customers. And for some reason, recently there's been a lot of issues regarding the parking. I've had conversations with Keith, um, you know, we call, I called him once about the barricade that was there before the building was um, burned down. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about, you know, when will that be open? And he's like, well, you know, there's a lot of concerns about this building, you know, and traffic, you know, so that remained. Then, you know, the fire happened and they got that cleared up, the barricades have been removed, and traffic's been flowing there again. But the parking has been the issue, and that's why I'm here today. Um, we have a lot of customers that come into our office. I know there's a city parking behind our building on Main Street around the courthouse, but a lot of times our customers, whether they're handicapped or you know elderly, it's just hard for them to go park behind the building 
to come all the way around or you know anywhere on the main street and so it makes it easier for them to park on that one side I know there was an ordinance from many years ago that stated that there was no parking on the south side and um, there's never been signs that I'm that I can remember on that you know just say no parking and then I know after a conversation with Keith that there was another ordinance that was passed later I think just a few years ago stating that there's no parking on either the north or the south side so he said eventually you know they're going to open that up you know clean it all up they're going to put signs back up and no parking well the signs were put up but then the signs were taken down again and we had a discussion um, that I there was a meeting here on March 15th I was not able to attend. Um, I was out of town and it was stated that we could park. But then he came back and said there was a clarification because of that second ordinance. Couldn't really find the date on it, but you know, no parking. There's a new business there at the corner on Main and Spence. Um, and ever since they've been putting that business in, I feel like that's when this complaint came in because we did get towed to move our vehicles because of a complaint. I've never heard of anybody complaining about the parking there on Spence Avenue since I started two and a half years ago. And I spoke with the ladies that worked there for 45 years and they too have parked in that. You know, they, they confuse that with an alley, but it's really not. The alley's across behind the bistro, I believe. If, so, I, if I remember right, the ordinance was for the alley that starts from South Main to Kennett Street, not from Spence to no, there, South there Main. Is a, there is an there ordinance. Is another ordinance. There is an ordinance from Spence to St. Francis. Uh, what, one was that? Francis Jackson. Well, let, let me explain what this is all about. And I appreciate you being up here. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, what happened is a few years ago, we started looking at how we could get a drive through available for the pharmacy on the corner there. At that time it was Keith Mitchell's. Uh, we actually met out there and tried to come up with a way to get them a drive through The only way that we could find that we could do that was to change the structure of that alley and restrict the parking, things like that. Um, we That was the intent of it. The people have not since that time put that drive through in. Uh, so that does not, I, I, I'll talk to them and see if they still are interested in it. Meanwhile, we're going ahead and we're checking the lighting in the area and see how the lighting is for safety issues. And we also are going to put in a concrete piece in the dirt that's between your parking and your door, if I recall. Is that correct? That's between your building and the fence where we talked about the other day. Yes, because that fence I checked is... and that okay. from the parking lot around to that is city property. Okay, and that's what another thing I was going to bring up because the safety, you know, I had requested City Light Gas and Water to put up two big square heads. Yes, and that's one in the corner where the bank drive through was <coughs> mm -hmm. and on the back of the building facing that, that little walkway because time change, it's so dark there and we get off at 4.30, it's already dark. There's a lot of people that hang out there all times, morning, noon, night. We found bags of needles. They're dumping their trash in that area. They're drinking back there, they're hanging out. We found bags back there of drug paraphernalia, all kinds of stuff. So I'm concerned for my employees, myself, the cleaning lady that comes at night, you know. So that's why we had those lights put up, you know. Um, the alley did have, or the street rather, did have one light, but it's not bright enough. So that's why we had those in. But again, I know, like I said, there's a new business there in the corner. There's people that are coming 24 hours from what I was told. And, you know, it, it's easy access for them to park on that one side, on the north side, you know, because the door is on that side. And again, with our employees, with our customers, you know, um, and like we talked about the signs that were taken down, um, we need proper signs from Main Street to show that that is a one-way yes, westbound, you know, because people are going both directions <clears throat> in there. Then we have to issue with the customers that run into the license office. Some of them don't understand that that's not a double parking, so they block the entrance. We can't, you know, no one can get through. Um, people cross that all the time. It's a dangerous 
spot because they're flying in from Jackson Street, you know, and they're just going out on Main, not even thinking, knowing or knowing that that's the one way from the other end, you know. So, again, you know, I there's a lot of things I've been thinking about all day today about this. Um, we have signatures from a lot of concern and people that are, you know, in support of parking on the north side of Spence Avenue, you know, and um, I brought that today. Good. We got a lot, like I said, we got a lot of people that are in support of this. Um, you know, uh, we've tried to keep up. I know Keith and I talked maybe a year ago or so about the, the mowing there, and I know from Terry Berry's time when she worked there, Mr. Don Berry used to help maintain the area, including the street. Mr. Crafton has done so as well. Um, the previous manager had her husband come up there, you know, and, um, you know, um, again, the parking in the back, it can get congested um, because <clears throat> we've got a lot going on right in that area from the license mm. office to the salon that's there, the barber shop, the beauty shop, our office, you know, and so again, we we hope that you guys can, you know, we, there take hasn't it into been consideration. a decision made on it because Understood. of all the, the issues that you're talking about. Yes, sir. And we've considered everything from uh, parking only, uh, <coughs> restricting parking during daytime hours and mm -hmm. not after five o'clock. We've got a lot of different ideas that yes. we're going to continue to work on it and. Uh, please continue to talk to Keith about it and yes. us about it, and we'll try to come up with a solution that is good for everyone. Okay. okay. And we don't we don't want to cause anybody a problem. We're just trying to do what needs to be done to keep tenants safe and yes, sir. functional as well. Okay. I so, appreciate it. So and thank, thank you, you for guys so much. <coughs> the uh, one way signs will be put up regardless of what happens. Yes. Yeah, we that's got, great. We just got those in and those will be put up the next few days. So we have it on both ends so that we're, we're gonna have them go. on Jackson where you turn yeah. in, it will be where right. they come out from the uh, new yeah. thing there between where the buildings were. Yes. There will be one when you're coming straight by the fence and there will be another one if they try to turn. Okay. So there will be three right there saying yeah. no. So right now is that's it one. eastbound one way or westbound one way? It is Westbound coming from Main Street to Jackson. One How way. would that work if there, there's cars parked on the right lane? It would make sense for them to park on the left hand side if somebody's turning from South Main towards Jackson, they'd expect to go to the right lane. They'll, they don't won't expect to find cars parked there. Yeah, it's it's no it, parking anywhere down through there. I think right there at the beginning at the intersection mm -hmm. of Main and Spence, there's there's in the ordinance it says the 20 or now there's the ordinance right here the last ordinance that was that was written on the whole thing says there's no parking from main street to jackson on either side of the road okay. well what was the date on that ordinance it doesn't have a date on it uh it just it there was one before it that had measurements i'm assuming when the bank was there to keep okay. people from parking around the drive through mm -hmm. there but the last one that they've got says no parking from from Maine to Jackson on either side of the road. And Mr. Palmer, as point of information, I, not, I'm not here with, the, with them, but it sounds from a spectator here, you're talking about a different alley, and they're talking about yeah. a different street. Yes. Well, Mitchell's Alley is that yeah. alley. Yeah. The pharmacy is on the other block. Yeah, yes. that's yeah. on the avenue. It's not right. even. But well, we're on the avenue right, right where yes. the. Um, I didn't, you know, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. I knew about the alley, but I didn't know anything about the street. streets. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to check into it, though, still, and, and we'll come up with a solution that is going to work for everybody. One of the biggest issues is it's not a very wide street. Yeah. We measured cars. Most of the cars are parked two foot from the sidewalk, and it's only a 20 foot street. So if you're two foot from the sidewalk on one side and you're driving two foot from the sidewalk on the other side, you've only got 16 feet there. And my truck's eight feet wide, mirror to mirror. So if wide, you've got a wide truck sitting there. there. Yeah, the trash trucks still come through <clears throat> both directions. Yeah. We have the UPS, FedEx trucks always driving down there, um, even with the vehicles there. Um, but um, that, while I was looking at that ordinance, and I know it said, Spence Avenue, 
north side and south side commencing 35 feet east of the intersection? Yeah, that's the that's ordinance the before the other one. Yes. The next that's one. That's the one that said no parking on at any time yeah. on both sides. Yeah, this one here. This one. You can have that if you want it. Oh, I have it. It says, uh, yes. from Maine to well. Jackson on either side, no parking. Yes. Which, I mean, it, uh, I don't care either way. That's just, yeah. that I'm enforcing lot. what's there, but yeah. I was told to enforce it if, if the council wants to change it. We'll, Understood. We'll, we'll, we'll do what they want to do. Right now, we're, if we had a meeting tonight, we're, we're looking into the, all the options. There actually have been people called me and said they didn't want it changed. Okay. So. Why they were happy with the way it was, and they said they'd like to see it that way. So that's why we're gonna kind of difficult look at it and so many options try to see if we can come up with an option to make everybody happy. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's like he said for parking in certain times or something or or just whatever. I mean, hour, hour, yeah, or something. Or whatever. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just been something like I said. It. But we are gonna put something in between there where we talked about. Where that water washes okay. that out, we yeah. are going to concrete that in there. That city property that way, people that do come there, and that was something that actually the people called and said they didn't want it changed. Mentioned that too, said they'd like to see something in there yeah. between the building and stuff. And that then they have to address that because Mr. Um, Hamilton's property, you know that fence. Yeah. And I asked him to come over there and see what was going on because it's falling. Right. And they so did he put has the up, well, though, didn't they? the lights are up, okay. yes, but. Mr. Hamilton, all he did was put a little post to push that fence back, and it's still well, it's it's, not secure. Well, if it's about to fall over on city property, we'll put a pole in the ground or something concrete yeah. it to make sure it doesn't fall over yeah. on somebody. We can do that, too, when we concrete it. Yeah. But, but like I said, you know, I just wanted to, because when, when the officer came in on that complaint, you know, he said, would you guys kindly move your vehicles? So of course, we did. And like I was saying earlier, you know, a lot of that been the way it's been. I know it's there's been an ordinance in place for years, but nothing enforced, and all of a sudden... Mainly why it wasn't enforced is because that road was blocked off, yeah. and nobody could go through there anyway. Yeah. So it wasn't really yeah. that big of a deal if people parked there, because you couldn't get through there to, anyway. And that's what I was asking the ladies. I said, as far as you know, even when that was open or what, they parked. They parked there, so, you know. But again, I thank you. I just wanted to bring that up. It's been a big concern for us, our employees, the customers, and other businesses around the area. And if I, I didn't know if you guys want this. I wanted to get the signatures that have been collected. So. We'll see what you think. We'll we'll I appreciate it. No thank problem. You. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kraft, Mr. Kraft. Mayor, Council, uh, I got issues on the same issue about the Spence Street. Uh, like I said, I know that street's been open for over 50 years since I've been in this town. Never been anything happening I know of up there. I don't know about any wrecks or anything like that's ever happened, but as far as I know, I've never seen anything or heard of anything. But now I know we put up the barricades. Three or four years ago, when that building got bad, it, it Murma required that because the building was about in there, I guess, ready to collapse or whatever. Right. I understand so, that, but that wasn't that been a long, long time. That's yeah, been, been open and working both directions. Yeah. But now, we at, at uh, Spence Street, the license bureau uses it all the time. The abstract office uses it all the time. People getting their driver's license, beauty shop, barber shops, Southern Glow. And like I said, I don't know about the parking there all day for people that work there, but I think if we if we can't get that going, we need to try to get some kind of a, like a two-hour parking. When we had the Opera House over here, we uh, got signs over there in front of the Opera House, two-hour parking, and a way the customers can get in there, do their business, and two hours they'll be on the way, next one come in with it again. Uh, we got the last building cleaned up on the corner right there. A young couple here bought it. And I think that uh, that's they got 24-hour tanning up there. And, uh, for us to help them out a little bit, I think would be a great thing. I don't know how hard it is to change an ordinance. It's not my job. But uh, I don't even know why it's put on there or why it's been brought up in the last, like it's going this big whirlwind all at once. 
And I've heard this because the uh, drive-in window in the alley uh, blocked them down. That, that it was dead street. No, that was but that, state. that thing had so much traffic in it, that's, the road hadn't shrunk, it hadn't grew. But uh, I just think it's something we need to, to try to help these young individuals out over with it. The 24-hour tannin will help their business a whole lot, and we need more businesses. You know? they got a place looking really good for the town. And, uh, I think if we can help them, we need to do all we do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, me and my wife, we're the ones that own Southern Glow and Boutique. And uh, when we bought the building, we took it as there was no issue about parking there. So we set up a 24-hour team to be able to use that street. You know, because uh, it'd be convenient for the customers. It, we put a light out there, cameras for safety. And now, being business is going, uh, we've got this issue about the parking now. We've got signatures from customers, and they have all agreed that if they can't park there, they don't feel safe parking a block away in the city parking because it's so dark. So that. that that's about 53% of our attainment in our business is that 24-hour service. So that's why, you know, it, it concerns us greatly. We put a lot of money in that building. You know, it, everybody talks about they want businesses to come back to town and on the square where we have invested a lot of money to open up a business again. And now it's in jeopardy of getting shut down just because of a parking issue. We're, we're going to work with you. I understand, I understand that, yes. We don't I understand. want that to happen. I understand. <clears throat> I just, you know, I want you all to understand how much that will affect our, our well, business. You know. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, would it help you? We have discussed uh, uh, limiting, like uh, was suggested earlier, the two-hour limit or hour limit or whatever. Yes, sir. I was, would that help you? Or the other thing we looked at is after a certain time frame being able to park there. Yes, sir. And we want to go ahead and check into the lights and all that as well and make sure that it is well lit uh, with that. So would those items be a benefit to you? Yes, I, I was actually going to ask for that. You know, if if it could be a limited parking or just, at, you know, in the evenings, uh, which I've got pictures, you know, it shows how dark it is over in the city parking and that that's, you know, the big concern sure. of which I'll go ahead and pass them around. Thank you. I mean, through the day we see that businesses all around us use that street to park in. I mean, we see uh, for the bistro, license bureau, just like Frank said, I mean, I've sat down and counted cars pulling up in what directions they're walking. I mean, it's not just, you know, it's not going to just affect us or the abstract office. It's, it's going to affect everything. And it, I've been down there to notice how dark it is and the night and all that. So, yeah, there's, a, there's issues. There's no doubt about it. But we're going to try to do what we can to help everybody. We want to try to, you know, it's, it's like anything else. One group wants certain things. Another group wants other things. We can, but we're going to do what we think is uh, the best for the community. We try to make sure we keep in mind your business. and work so we're going to see what you come up with. Okay. Sure. We don't, we don't want to do anything to harm your business. You appreciate it. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I add one more thing? Yes. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, um, I know when Keith and I talked a few weeks ago about the street itself, those are considered sidewalks mm. in front of our building and on the other side where Mr. Crafton's building is. And the air conditioners are at. They need to be addressed. We have had customers in wheelchairs try to act, you know, get up there, and it's not even. It's not even. Yeah, because the drop down right where they're going to fix that area is is bad, and having to go all the way around to the front where the beauty shop is, it's it's just not. So I just wanted to bring that up as well. If they're going to look into this and. See what all we can do is. Yes. I wanted to make sure that was addressed as well. Okay. 
forgot. <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> I had talked to Jason Scherer about this, and like he told me, I guess it was last week when I talked to him, he said, Ben, that if it's going to be a one-way street, that it does not affect him one bit pulling out of his parking lot. He said beforehand when he thought he could turn and go east, yes, but he said, Ben, I can't even go that direction. He said, it doesn't affect me one bit. He said, so that's what me and Jason had talked about, which I know some are saying he's the one that said he didn't want it changed, but that's not what he told me, you know. I mean, that's having just our conversation. Great. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll tell you what, I just talked about it. <laughs> I didn't come here for this, but I'm just being a spectator again. Um, I've heard a lot of folks say they want the parking, they need the parking, safety, a lot of various reasons. I haven't heard one negative yet. I don't understand what the big holdup would be. I mean, if you can act on this to where there's a city ordinance that hasn't been enforced for many years before the barricades and after the barricades, I mean, it, it shouldn't be complicated. Well, I don't think it will be. So, you know, I just, I just, they're getting, I know from what they're hearing, we're not getting, they're not, they're hearing mixed emotions. At least that's what I've heard over here. But again, well, it's not, it's, it's not me, per, it's not my personal business, but it's Kenneth. Okay. And we need business. And I, I, so, strictly for me, I've gotten in trouble for making decisions on my own, and I'm going to make sure I take it to the Well, committee. please, I, again, I'm not here for this, but I just, hearing it, it's just, it could help us out. I'm just, but I'll tell you what, I, <laughs> I want to comment the downtown area. It's, it's, it's going the right direction. Yeah. It's, I'm really proud to see it. Uh, I think that's one of the last buildings that we've done on the corner there. They've redone it after we've done it. So, same way the vault did. They've redone it after we've done it again. But it's, the, the town is, is at night, weekends and afternoons, the restaurants. Dressing doors, everything just to somebody wants to get the other north side back kicking again, they'll be it'll just keep it going that way. A lot of work, it makes a lot of help working together. Yeah, <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, there's no one else. We'll need a motion to adjourn and go into closed session. Motion. Yes, yes. 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 yes.